Hello and welcome to the fourth part of our screencast series about how to set up an awesome Python development environment. In this part we will learn how to use virtual ENV, which is a little bit complex. It might take a lot of time. We only have five minutes. Let's go. Okay, so first thing you have to do with virtual environment is make one. So let's make a virtual ENV. Now we want to do distribute. If we don't do distribute, then it's going to use the old crappy version of easy install and distribute is way better. And the other thing we want is we want no site packages because that gets rid of all that Ubuntu weird stuff that uh, we don't want in our program. So this project we're going to work on is called uh, My Game. And it's making a new virtual environment named My Game. Installing distribute into it. Takes a little while. It's all right. And you'll notice now at the beginning of our prompt, there's parentheses, and it says my game. That tells you that you are currently working on the project, my game. And if we do pip freeze, we'll notice that all that weird Ubuntu stuff is gone, and the only things left are distribute and WSGI ref. And you're going to be happy that WSGI ref is there if you uh, work on some sort of web project. And distribute, we told it to install. So even though, all right, if we deactivate, and we are no longer working on anything, and we do pit freeze, we can see all the stuff is still installed on our system. But when we work on my game, all right, then we can see that only these two things are installed. And if we were to easy install Django while working on my game, Mm -mm 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 -mm. then you will see that Django is now installed in my game. But if I deactivate, well, there's actually a Django installed on the system that we installed during the earlier part of our screencast. But the point is, is that this allows you to create virtual environments, right, where you don't have to worry about the Python path or anything weird like that, and you can install different versions of different Python modules into different virtual environments. Let's uh, let's make another virtual environment just to drive the point home. Uh, distribute no site packages. We'll call this my website. Okay. Now there's a, actually a handy command cd virtual env. You notice we're currently still in the home folder. cd virtual env will teleport you into whatever virtual environment you just made. You notice there's some stuff in here. Uh, usually what I tend to do is I'll you know make a make a directory inside the virtual environment like site, and then I'll do all my work in here, all right? And virtual env keeps all of its magic stuff in bin and other places and include in lib. And I just leave those alone so I don't break it. And you'll see this new virtual ENV we made, right? Only has distribute and WSGIRF. It doesn't have Django or anything. Let's uh, let's easy install. Oh, Python Graph Core. That's a good one, right? And notice that we don't have to use sudo to do these easy installs anymore. We don't need root permissions, uh, which can be very handy if, say, you know, you are uh, an administrator and you've set up a machine for, say, computer science students. You don't want to give them root access to be able to install Python modules. What you can do is you can allow them to make virtual environments. Then they can use easy install to install Python modules into those virtual environments without needing root permissions for the entire system and such, which is very handy. So now we can look and we can see that Python Graph Core is installed in the MySite project. And if we work on my game, you can switch, that's right, directly from one project to another. All right, this one has Django, but does not have Python Graph Core. And this is the magic of virtual ENV, installing p different Python modules into different projects, keeping them completely separate not getting in the mess with each other, and not needing root permissions to use easy install. That concludes part four of the screencast series about how to set up a awesome Python development environment. Will there be a part five? Stay tuned.